Her Chinese name is Ji Xiaopiao. It was given to her by her orphanage director, and Piao, what Americans would call her first name, even though it is said last in Chinese, literally means floating on the wind. The movie Gone with the Wind was translated into one word, Piao. So from the beginning, she has floated on the wind. And she indeed came to me and her father on an airplane across the Pacific Ocean to settle here in Arizona. And she became the youngest of our three children, arriving when she was just nine months old. Many of you know her now as Jolie, or Jolie in French, it means pretty. My beautiful daughter, who turns 18 in just a couple of weeks. And I'm so honored to have her and her brothers here this morning. Thank you. <laughs> in one sense, I made it happen, her joining our family, through endless amounts of paperwork, a small inheritance from my father, and the sheer determination to have a daughter. Not that the boys weren't great. But in a larger sense, I have had nothing to do with the powerful positive impact she has had on me and the lives she touches every day. Being a parent is a lesson in letting go. And learning to let go has been a hard lesson for me, one who likes to manage my family and its activities. When she was a toddler, I thought I could control her with a timeout chair. Instead, the only way to keep her there was to lie on top of her while she screamed and kicked. <clears throat> that soon felt like a very bad idea, even though it seemed completely reasonable when I read about it in the parenting book. When she wouldn't stay near me in the department store, I pretended to leave. This worked like a charm with her brothers, as they soon panicked and came running after me. But when I look, would look behind for her, she was often just gone, hiding in the clothing racks. Was she fearless and confident that she could always find where she needed to go? Or did she know that I would always come looking for her? I don't know. But I know that I sometimes felt uncertain and scared as a parent. And I wished I was more in control, in control of her, of me, of the outcome of her growing up years. I let her climb trees and even learn the balance beam, even though my heart pounded when I watched her go up the tree. And I had to shut my eyes during her balance beam routines. After having two boys who preferred to live in t-shirts and shorts, I loved it when she wore dresses. But she stopped wearing them at about age four and refused to wear them again until just recently. I couldn't do her hair up to her satisfaction for the gymnastics meets, so I swallowed my pride and asked other moms or even dads to do her hair. They were far better than I was. She did take 12 years of piano lessons and also plays the oboe, but has she ever played for you all? She never wanted to play alone in public, never, certainly never at church, certainly never at our church. <sighs> Alas. Letting go is not just realizing that children want to do things in their own way and time. Funny, just like other people. It's also about realizing that we have little control over, what, over much of what happens in their lives in our lives, in any of our lives, what side of a border we are born on, what genes have been passed down to us, a sudden accident, being in just the right place at the right time for that great job, an unexpected storm, being put in the class with the one teacher who inspires us to pursue to pursue a certain profession, the poor choices a family member makes, the kitten that found us, a terrible illness, falling in love. We are not 
in control of any of these things. In Buddhism, the concept of letting go is central to decreased suffering. Our rather materialistic and individualistic society has conditioned us from an early age to relate most everything back to ourselves. People, things, ideas, concepts, all these we understand in relationship to us. We strive to achieve, to attain knowledge, wealth, power, but we cling to these things. We hold on. Though most of these things, even people, are temporary. So Dev, what does it mean to let go? Sometimes it can be a literal letting go. Those who know me best, my kids, my husband James, know that I have trouble letting go of stuff. I've often wondered why I have so many endless piles. Like my mother, I enjoy working on several, many projects all at once. I don't like cleaning them up at the end of the day, especially if I know I will work on them again tomorrow. I do like having things out where I can see them and be reminded of them. But like all of you, I'm a busy person and I get sidetracked by life. You know the result. Things have gotten a little out of control over the years. There have been times when my kids have lovingly hinted that I am like one of those hoarders on a TV show. <laughs> and James has basically done an intervention with me. <laughs> not, not usually my idea of fun, but as my family also knows, I do almost always put people before things. I just never seem to have enough time to sort and organize, and then my things can overwhelm me. Ah, oh, how to let go. Thanks to the support, um, pressure from my family, I'm getting better at letting go of the things that are crowding out what truly give me joy or the really special things that remind me of those dear to me. And it does help to take a picture of those cute little baby clothes before giving them away. Are there things in your life that you keep you from experiencing joy, true joy, true peace, true contentment? For many of us, what is in the way is fear. It is not easy to let go of fear. The future is always uncertain, and yet we try to predict it. We especially worry about what might go wrong. How I fretted over a particular test in high school, only to arrive that day and find out the teacher was sick and the test was postponed. All that worry including a bad stomach ache. And for what? Nothing. The London-born Buddhist monk, Ajahn Brahm, talks about how fear can be our undoing in his 2005 book of stories, rather graphically titled, Who Ordered This Truckload of Dung? <laughs> One of the stories <laughs> recounts an episode from the old television series Kung Fu, which by the way, I never watched. But apparently in it, the young Buddhist no novice monk, Little Grasshopper, was taught a lesson about how fear finds fault with the future. His teacher one day brought him to an indoor pool 20 feet wide with a narrow wooden plank as a bridge. And in that pool was strong acid and besides that strong acid, there were all these old white bones, old bones of other novices who 
who had fallen in. <clears throat> well, the teacher said, okay, a little grasshopper, you practice, practice hard, because in seven days, we're going to have a little test. And you're going to have to walk across this narrow wooden plank. And you know what might happen if you fall in? Those, those bones. So little grasshopper practiced. He practiced on his own every day, even practiced blindfolded until he got stronger and stronger and more confident and he could really do it. He was ready for the test. So the day of the test came and he gets on that rickety little plank, took a step, very confident, took another step, started wobbling, took another step, everything's shaking, and then, of course, there was a commercial break. <laughs> then, after the break, he was still wobbling. He was halfway across, but really wobbling. He was losing total confidence. And then, then, ker splash, he fell in. The old teacher laughed, because it was only water. The old bones were just for effect. Fooled Grasshopper, also the television audience. They were all fooled. And the teacher asked, what made you fall in? Fear made you fall in, little Grasshopper. Only fear. Not only is it often helpful, even necessary, to let go of fear, there are other emotions that letting go can help. Letting go can help move us forward when we're stuck. Emotions like anger, sorrow, the desire for revenge. All these can weigh us down so that there is little room for love and compassion. Of course, I'm not saying deny difficult, complex feelings, push them down, hide them, because they're still there. They can negatively impact us and keep us back. And as I said to the kids and you all during the healing rain, sometimes learning how to go into those feelings, finding healthy ways to express them, can then help us let go better. Because if we haven't been able to forgive or let go of pain or anger, they can be part of who we are part of our identity. Do, do we, do you, do you really want to create an identity based on your pain, on your suffering? And learning to go, to let go does not mean to stop loving, to forget, or to move on. It doesn't mean to th never think about the painful event or to not care when a relationship ends. And although I mentioned that letting go has been a hard lesson for me, I don't think it's a lesson at all. It's a practice every day. It's part of breathing in and breathing out. Sometimes we do the song, breathing in and breathing out. That's a practice. sometimes means we don't have to do, do anything. We just be. This is what can give great relief and ease our suffering. When my first husband, Russ, was so sick, I sometimes felt pressure to not ever give up, keep being hopeful, as if by magical thinking he could be well, or that my acceptance of his coming death meant I might be doing something to cause its advancement. But what really helped me was to accept that none of this was in my control. My thinking, my actions, my words, my optimism, I was not in charge of this journey. What a relief. It was out of my hands. Another teacher, Jesus of Nazareth, as he 
was dying, apparently said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. We aren't in control of the course of our lives. In this, excuse me, in this society of doers, maybe the most compassionate and healthiest thing is to realize we don't need to do anything. But learning to let go is more art form than science. It's messy, imperfect. It happens over and over again. It can't be forced. And it's different for each of us. And our lives are a flowing river of change. Lately, I've been imagining, imagining that I am riding a wave of change and I, as I imagine, my mantra is, just as in their song, as it is. As we breathe in, as I breathe in, I say, as it is. And then when I breathe out, as it is. Perhaps you might want to try that with me right here and now. As we breathe in, saying to yourself, or out loud, as it is, as we breathe out, as it is, in, as it is, out, as it is. If you haven't already done so, I would invite you to find for yourself some kind of spiritual practice that allows for letting go. And by letting go, it makes room in your heart for more love and compassion and acceptance. A Buddhist path can offer several such possible practices. Best known to most of us is a regular practice of sitting in meditation. Not all of us are good at sitting. So it could be a mantra like we just practiced as it is. A mantra tied to the breath. In Pema Chodron's book, Comfortable with Uncertainty, she talks of a kind of mind training where one focuses on taking in pain and sending out pleasure. Many other traditions too offer possible spiritual practices. A regular prayer life, walking a labyrinth, we have one outside, if you don't know, to the north of the sanctuary. It could be a habit of writing down thoughts and feelings, memories, regrets. Perhaps even writing a letter to a person who has died. These can be powerful rituals that allow for letting go of pain, letting go of hurt. So as my daughter Jolie, formerly known as Piao Piao, begins the next phase of her life and leaves our home for the first time to live on her own at UC Davis this coming fall, I add my love to the as it is mantra. I will continue to love and cherish her as I have since I first saw her and held her in that hotel room in Western China but I think it will be harder than I can even imagine right now not to have her with me every single day. We have shared so much in these short years. Although I have at times been lovingly described as a free-range parent, like most of my generation of parents, I've also been very hands-on and very involved. Sometimes maybe too much. Jolie's dad once told me he wasn't afraid of dying. He was afraid of saying goodbye to Jolie. Letting go is not a pushing away or shutting down of something. It's an allowing and attending to the breath, a softening, a loving compassion, yes, maybe even a blessing. 
be who you are, be as it is. Amen.